So in this video, we're going to talk about laser cavities and in particular why they're useful and why we want to use them. Uh, so let's say that we have this block of gain material. Maybe it's gallium arsenide, but it's in general some semiconductor and it's got some gain now G. And so if I send in an electric field, so I send in an electric field, let's call this E in then assuming we don't get any reflections or anything, this field propagates through the gain medium and it starts to get larger and larger and larger. And if this distance is L, uh, then I can calculate the electric field that I should get at the output. It's just whatever I had at the input times E to the plus uh, G L. Now this is, uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna call this G E uh, because usually gain is specified for intensity. Um, so I'm going to call GE, uh, I'm going to use GE here, and this is just the gain divided by 2. And similarly, you can calculate the output optical power, uh, it's just, or the output optical intensity, it's just the input intensity times e to the plus GL, or 2GEL, because one is, the intensity is related to the field by a square. And you know, that's not bad, right? Uh, we have more intensity uh, than we had before. So we have a larger electric field than we had before. And that's kind of nice. But if instead we place this into a cavity, so, so let's take this block of semiconductor and place it between a couple of mirrors. So I'm gonna have mirror one on the left and mirror two on the right. And in between, there's going to be some semiconductor material. So inside, we've got our semiconductor material with a given gain G. And let me just draw this in, uh, in an outline so that it's clear there's something inside here. Uh, so now what happens when we send in an electric field? So let's send in an electric field E in. Uh, well, if, if we send it at a mirror, a certain amount of it is going to be reflected. And we call the amount that's reflected, uh, let's say that Let's say that this is material zero, this is also material zero, and this is material one. So this has some, uh, it's probably air, so let's, let's call this air. Uh, but this has some refractive index, or equivalently some wave impedance. And this semiconductor also has a different refractive index, so n semiconductor and a different wave impedance. And so a certain amount is going to be reflected, we'll just call that R01 times whatever our incident electric field was, and a certain amount is going to be transmitted into the cavity, and let's call that T01 times our incident electric field. And everything is going to become in terms of the incident electric field, so I'm just going to normalize everything. Uh, I'm going to divide everything by EN so that this is 1 now. Uh, this is just R01, and this is T01. That'll just make things easier to keep track of. And R01 and T01, you could calculate using Fresnel's equations. So Fresnel equations, and I might make a future video on that in my series on electromagnetics. But this zero one index here just means we're going from material zero to material one. Okay, now we've got our electric field, it's meandering along through the semiconductor, but now uh, it's inside a gain material, so it's getting larger. So by the time it gets to the end here, uh, and is ready to reflect off this second surface, we have T01 times E to the G E L, where this is similarly the length of the semiconductor L. And G E again is just the electric field gain. And now a certain amount of this is gonna get transmitted through this right-hand mirror, and we can calculate that. It's just T10 now times whatever the initial quantity was. So T01 E to the G E L. Uh, and so now we all we have to do is figure out what happens now inside the semiconductor. So we have to worry about now we've got another reflection. So R10, T01, E to the GL, or GEL. And now this will propagate again, give us more gain, reflect again, reflect again, reflect again. And you want to add up all of those fields and then figure out what the total field is transmitted at the output from all these infinite reflections. And if you do that, you'll start adding up a bunch of terms that start, and you start to notice a pattern. So the first one is just this term, and then we've got T10, T01, E to the 3GEL, 
uh, times r10 squared. And this, now we've got another term, t10, t01, e to the 5 gel, r10 to the fourth. And you might notice a pattern here. Each time we're adding or we're multiplying by r10 squared and e to the 2 gel. And so we can write this whole thing as an infinite series. So t10, t01, e to the gel times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of r10 squared uh, e to the gel, or e to the 2 gel, and then this raised to the power of n. And just to avoid the awkwardness, we can replace this 2 ge with just g. Uh, so e to the gl. And this is just a geometric series, so we can actually evaluate what this is. Uh, this is just t10, t01, e to the gel, or let's say gl over 2, uh, divided by 1 minus r10 squared e to the gl. And we can write this now as our total electric field uh, in terms of our incident electric field, so we can denormalize everything. But notice something really interesting in the denominator. What happens when r10 squared times e to the gl is equal to 1? This denominator will become 0, and this whole term multiplied by our instant electric field will blow up to infinity. So for a teensy teensy tiny incident electric field, maybe even a 0, maybe even no electric field, uh, we can get a huge output electric field or a huge output intensity and compare this to our initial just sending light through a gain medium uh, we just multiplied by this constant which was compared to uh, compared to a constant infinity is pretty good if our goal is to get as much light out of this thing as possible and really the goal of this cavity is to create a self-sustaining field so even if we don't have any incident optical power, so we don't have any incident electric field, even if we just have a tiny electric field that gets started inside this semiconductor, we can build up to a very large one and then have a large output field, which is going to be determined by uh, other stuff that we haven't learned yet. And this tiny starting electric field, uh, this will often come from spontaneous emission spontaneous emission. So if we just have a really tiny electric field that happens to be generated in precisely the right way, we can build that up to a very large self-sustaining oscillation and get a bunch of light out of this cavity. And so that's why resonators, and uh, this is called a Fabry-Perot cavity, Fabry-Perot cavity. That's why these are so cool. Now you might have a question, is this really infinity? Uh, well, no, it's not really infinity. Uh, because at a certain point, you're not going to be able to generate any new, uh, any new photons. All of your electrons will have dropped down from the conduction band to the valence band. Uh, and you're not going to be able to supply them fast enough for you to still have enough gain. So your carrier density is going to start to fall uh, if, you, if you stimulate too many electrons to fall into the valence band. And how exactly the dynamics of this work, so how exactly the dynamics of carriers and photons work, is going to be the subject of the next couple of videos. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.